Good morning, Grade 7. So for today, we will continue discussing about the arts and crafts of Lowland Luzon. So last week, we talked about on how they are dressed or how they dress and what are the different fabrics that they use in their clothes and also the different products or the crafts that they are making in Lowland Luzon. So if you're ready, let's start! So today we will going to talk about the different accessories, body ornaments, architecture and sculpture in Lowland Luzon. So first we have accessories and body ornaments. So Filipinos were already fond of making jewelry and adoring themselves with accessories even before the arrival of the Spaniards. So as you can see in the picture, this is a uh, Maharlikan girl or women from before the Spaniards. So we say that before the Spaniards came in and colonized the Philippines, we already have governing system in the Philippines that we called barangay. So in each barangay, there is a datu, the, who serves as the highest hierarchy in barangay and the Datas family are considered as a Maharlika. So you can see in the picture, she is a part of Maharlika family because of her col colorful clothes and lots of accessories that she wears. So women always match their clothes to their belts scarves, necklaces that is made of beads or pieces of gold or brass. So another example is this. So as you can see, she has the belt and the different accessories from head to, he to her hands and the different necklaces. Also, we have women who are fond of wearing accessories such as earrings, armbands, bracelets, and anklets. So, as you can see in the picture, they are really fond of accessories, especially those who are um, in higher positions. Next, an example of a beauty regimen as well is the ancestral Filipinos used to fill the decorates their teeth with gold, color them with red or black plant dye. So as you, as you can see in the picture, this is an example of a skull which is found in Bolinao where the teeth was decorated with small pieces of gold. Next, uh, as part of the beauty regimens, uh, which is practiced during pre-colonial times is the men wore their hair at shoulder length. So, nakikita nyo or nakikita nyo or napapansin dun sa first picture at the top. So, that is a man. Look at his hair. Uh, shoulder length. And also, the women are even longer. Sometimes, even reaching the ground. So next, another example is they piled up their hair on the top of their heads and tied it high on the crown. So, dapat laging nakapusod. So, as you can see in the picture, nakapusod sila, then uh, they have that so-called crown, which is worn by a princess or the queen. Next is... Four men is wearing a cloth head coverings called putong were also worn by men. So this is a uh, four men wearing a putong is commonly associated with bravery. So if you wear a putong, you're on the top or one of the most strong and mighty warrior of your barangay or your place. So next... After the pre-colonial, so the Spaniards came in, then 
a new set of jewelry became popular among Filipinos. And it's called tambourine jewelry, as you can see in the picture. It was introduced by the friars or the priests and was widely worn at that period. So it was designed inspired by the rosary, the religious beads highly associated with Catholicism. Okay, so it looks like a rosary as the Catholic used. So we're done with the accessories and body regimens and now we were going to talk about the architecture so first we have the household structure so first we have Bahay Kubo so Bahay Kubo is also known as Nipahat so uh, the Bahay Kubo is one of the common household structures seen in the country so usually this house is more evident in the towns and provinces, so specifically in the farmlands. So, in farmlands, they use the Bahay Kubo as a resting place for the farmers. So, the materials used for the Bahay Kubo are dried palm for the roof and leaves or sawali, reeds and straw. So, the structure of its roof is steep to allow the air to circulate inside the hut. That's why when you were in a Bahay Kubo, it's not that really uh, hot because the air is circulating inside. So other than Bahay Kubo, we have Bahay Nabato. So the Bahay Nabato is a type of architectural house design that was developed around cities and towns during the Spanish time. So it was commonly built for well-to-do families or for, for the wealthy families during the, that period and was built usually at the edge of the street. So the main entrance of the door was wide and its walls were made of stone or adobe for the ground floor and hardwood for the walls of its second floor so usually at the first floor it is made of stone and in the second floor it is made of woods so until now the Bahay Nabatois still exist in some part of our country specifically when you visit the town of Vigan in Ilocos region so their ancestral houses are well preserved that reflects our country's cultural heritage. So next we have the chalet. So the chalet is a Swiss architectural that first emerged in the country during the American occupation. So when we say Swiss, it's a Switzerland's architecture or ar architectural. So Usually, a chalet is a one-story house which is slightly raised above the ground. So, the chalet has a veranda or open porch that usually runs either along the front or two sides of the house. So, the cottages in the Camp Janhe in Baguio are examples of chalets. So now we're going to talk about the ancestral churches. So Filipinos are known to be a religious people. We usually value faith and religion. So as evidence of our faith, we have various ancestral churches that are centuries old. So these churches were commonly found in different parts of lowland Luzon that serves as a symbol of greatest influence of the Spanish who colonized the Philippines for more than 300 years. So let's see. So first we have the Baraswain Church. So the Baraswain Church in Malolos, Bulacan is a Catholic church that was a venue for some of the most important historical events in the country. So one of which is the inauguration of the First Republic of the Philippines. 
So the Barisui in Church was declared as a national shrine by President Ferdinand Marcos for its significant part in the Philippine history. So also, we have the Pauay Church. So it is located in Pauay, Ilocos Norte, and it was built way back during the Spanish times. So the church architectural designs follow the Baroque style, similar to church structure found in European countries. So when we say Baroque period or Baroque style, it is highly decorative and theatrical style. So wherein they build churches like Pauai. So when you come to the in, in the continent of Europe, you will see different Baroque style churches as well. So because of its national and cultural significance, it is recognized as one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So next, we have the San Agustin Church. So the San Agustin Church is located within the walls of Intramuros in Manila. So this is considered to be the oldest stone church in the Philippines. So it was built in 1586 under the supervision of the Augustinian friars. So like the common structural designs of the Catholic churches around the country, the San Agustin Church also features the Baroque style so it is also recognized as the unesco heritage site of the country so the name san agustin came from the augustinians missionary who were the patrons of san agustin so we're done with the architectural so let's go now to the sculpture so, aside from churches, the sculpture found in Lowland Luzon also shows the influence of the Catholic religion to the Filipino, Filipino culture which is brought from the Spaniards. So, first we have the streets of Paete, Laguna is lined up with various wooden figures of religious Catholic icons as you can see and the pictures different types of Catholic icons will be built in Paete as well as in the town of Makabebe in Pampanga also produces wooden figures used in Catholic worship so you might be wondering how do they do such um, icon made of wood so we're going to watch some videos that we will see how they make the sculptures of different worship papakita ko naman po sa inyo kung paano po magsimula bumuo ang isang imahe o paggawa ng isang santo so magsisimula po muna tayo dito sa blocking hahati-hatiin po muna natin ang mga kahoy Aking, yung mga detalye ng ukit ng bagbag, i-detail natin ng maayos na maayos.
Okay, ito na yung last na stage ng paggawa ng isang image na santo. Ito yung pinaka, para sa akin eh, pinakang gustong gusto ko. Matagal, siguro abutin tayo ng two weeks. Mahirap mo rin madaliin kasi oil siya, mahirap siyang matuyo, matagal. Siya mga gusto magpinta, tsaka lang din. Tsaka focus ka dun sa gagawin mo. Kung saan ka, tsaka wag mo lagyan ng doubt yung trabaho mo. Simula pa lang, <clears throat> ito nakuha ko to sa isang magaling ding pintor. Nakuha ko to. Uh, sabi niya, wag mo lagyan ng question mark agad yung trabaho mo. Para natapos siya ng maganda yan. Para sa'yo. So that is how you make a sculpture of the word um, Catholic icon. Papakita ko naman po sa So that's it for the first lesson. Thank you for listening. Grade 7. Bye!